Hello, my name is Jonathan Gaughan and I'm the team manager for the Instrumental Music Service. It's my pleasure to welcome you here today for our first online digital piano festival. East Lothian's Piano Festival is a highlight of the musical calendar and it's a wonderful opportunity for our young people to normally perform in the townhouse and play on the beautiful piano there. This year we've moved our festival online and I just want to take this opportunity to congratulate the 58 young musicians who are performing today on their superb performances. It's been a real pleasure to mix these together this week and I've been absolutely blown away by the standard and the musicality in your playing. Thank you very much. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the parents for their support. There's a lot of challenges at present with remote learning and everything that COVID brings and it was incredible to see these young people performing so well. So thank you parents and carers at home, it, your support really means a lot to us. This is also a wonderful opportunity for me to thank our superb instrumental instruction staff. I'd just like to thank them all for the wonderful work they do with the young people. I think the number of people performing today and the standard they're performing to is a tribute to your hard work. So thank you for all your efforts in organising today's event. It's going to be a wonderful day of music making. I'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome our adjudicator, Mr. Graham MacDonald. It's a pleasure to have you here today, and I'm certainly looking forward to hearing your feedback for the young people. And I know that every year your involvement in this festival is a source of inspiration for the young pianists in East Lothian. So thank you very much. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to our instrumental instructor, Liz Woodsend, who's going to introduce our first class. Hello, my name is Liz Woodsend and I'm delighted to welcome you to the East Lothian Piano Festival Class 1. So this is for pupils who have been learning the piano for less than one year. Um, when we do the piano festival normally, I love this class. This is probably my favourite class because these people are at the very, very start of their piano playing career. So well done all of you for doing a recording and maybe this is your first performance, so well done. Okay, without further ado, I will pass you over to Emma Isted and she's going to be playing Stepping Out. Hello, my name is Emma and I go to East London Primary School. I'll be playing the Stepping Out. I'm in class one, I'll be playing Westminster Chimes for you. Thank you. Congratulations to the class one pianist. Thank you for your brilliant performances. My name is Mrs Hudson and I am the piano teacher for Preston Lodge, St Gabriel's and Long Nidre Primary and this is my first piano festival as I'm sure it is for many of you as well. Before we continue with the uh, class two, I'd just like to acknowledge how difficult it is to produce a recording that you're happy with and I'm sure many of you took many takes until you got it right. So congratulations on producing something you really are, should be proud of. I know that lockdown has been really brightened up for me by seeing my pupils every week on live lessons and I know that the other instrumental teachers feel the same. 
I'd like to thank you all for your commitment to your lessons and well done for progressing so well in such difficult circumstances. Now on with the show, it's my pleasure to introduce the class two pianists who are primary school up to initial grade. Please enjoy, thank you. Twinkle, twinkle, little star of class two. Class 2, Kindergarten Blues. My name's Liz Woodsend and welcome to Class 3 of East Lothian's Piano Festival. 
Class three is for primary school pupils who are grade one and over. You might like to know class three that you are the biggest class entering today. So well done all of you who've taken the time to put together your videos and get them sent in. And without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce you Angus Taylor playing Blue Onions. Hello, I'm Angus Taylor. I'm in class three and I'm going to play Blue Onions. <laughs> at Longledge Primary School and the piece I'm going to be playing today is called Steady as a Rock by Pam Ledgewood.
my name is Natalia Bell and I will be playing a piece called At Sunset. My name is Alexander Lavery. I'm in class two and I'm going to play Minuet in G by George Wall.
Well, the first thing I'd like to say is what a tremendous privilege it is to be with you here again at this year's Piano Festival. And although it's perhaps quite different from what we're used to, um, it is no less brilliant in its quality. And I'm sure you'll all agree with me in saying that what we've just listened to represents a tremendous achievement on so many different levels. Um, wonderful, beautiful musical playing, folks, um, across the board. Um, stuff that actually, if I'm being honest with you, brought a tear to my eye when I was listening to you and watching you. Because I know how difficult it is to film things like that and turn out playing of that kind of quality. What makes it so difficult when we film? You know, you'll be used to me if you've met me before asking you questions. I always like to have a fairly interactive session with you. But it's tension, isn't it, when we record? In actual fact, I'm feeling it just now when I'm trying to record this. In fact, I'm dreading watching myself back. And perhaps that's how you felt about seeing yourselves. We kind of oh, go like that. We shrink in on ourselves. Perhaps, unless you're a total cool cat and you manage to get it recorded in a single take, it maybe took you more than one take. Some of you may have taken 10 takes. Some of you may have taken 20. I'm not telling you how many takes I've had to do to get this um, comments real sorted for the end of the class. But we tense up, basically. One of the great enemies of good playing. Now, if we all relax and flop around about the place, we're not really going to play that well. But it's when our thoughts get closed down, it gets quite difficult to play well, isn't it? But you did really, really well with all of that. I want to single out a couple of things that I was particularly impressed by when I listened to you all. Articulation, first of all. What is articulation? Well, it's all to do with the musical phrasing, isn't it? All to do with the punctuation in the music. The marks that are put all over your pages that the composer has used there to help recreate the sounds that they want. What help us communicate a piece of music? You know, if you just bash through things, you get the notes right, get the rhythm right. It doesn't really have much character, does it? It's the articulation that helps to do that. So well done, some beautiful legato playing, beautiful staccato playing, some great phrases, a real sense of the mood and atmosphere in all these pieces of music. Dynamics, that's another thing. What do dynamics mean? Well, I'm sure if you were all here with me just now, you'd be shouting, it's to do with the volume, it's to do with the volume. And you're absolutely right. A real sense and a lot of that playing of an awareness of the volume and what it can do to help convey the mood and the atmosphere, to bring the music alive. So well done with that. Lovely hand positions, lovely neat finger work, a lot of preparation. That's one of the words that was springing into my mind all through that is, this is well prepared, well organised, well thought out. Well done. It's so difficult to do all that and to capture it on film. And I know very often when I've been speaking to you before at the front of the townhouse and demonstrating, talking about practising and talking about doing this and doing that kind of thing, you've done it all. Your teachers have worked with you through really quite challenging situations this year for lessons and you are playing beautifully. It just shows you this marriage of all this technology that we have nowadays and then your skill as well. We're still able, despite the circumstances we're in just now, to have our piano festival. So well done, absolutely brilliant. Now if there's one tiny wee thing I'd like to say, it concerns how we're sat down, right? Well, some people are sitting on the floor, some people are standing. I know it's so difficult folks to find a good place sometimes in the house, especially if it's busy to play and to practice. But see if you can get yourselves organised so that you're sat down somewhere, so that you've actually got plenty of room to move round about when you're playing, so you can have good hand position, so you've got a nice level arm between your arm and the top of your hand, lightly curved fingers. It actually makes it much, much better to move around and it gives you the ability to actually move up and down the keyboard smoothly. But thank you so much 
for your playing. It um, brought a tear to my eye and um, I'm sure it has done to many other people that have been listening to it as well. Thank you. Hello, my name is Miss Aspley and I teach piano and woodwind in the Musselburgh Cluster. I'm delighted to be able to introduce class four for pupils of secondary school age up to and including grade two level. Our young people have been working very hard this term to continue their learning using Google Meets. I'm thrilled that so many of them have been able to record these wonderful videos of their performances using their own pianos at home without teachers to support them. And now for our first performance. Hi, I'm Connor. I'm going to be playing New World Symphony. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for listening. This is Cool Calypso.
is Waltz Mystique by Ray Moore. <laughs> Welcome to Class 5 of the East Lothian Piano Festival, which is for high school students who are around Grade 3 to 4 standard. These young people are getting used to doing their lessons online, but this is not without its challenges, as Wi-Fi signals come and go and families are often competing for computer time and space. Also, recording their pieces at home can be quite challenging, as there are so many things that can go and do go wrong. However, we're all getting much better at this technology thing. The students have all recorded their own pieces and sent them, sent them in themselves, which is brilliant. So it's really down to the students themselves that we can put on this virtual event. And now for our first performance in Class 5.
Kylie Wayward and I'm going to be playing Sunrise on the Matterhorn. <laughs> Well, everyone, thank you for wonderful performances across the board. Now, that was a statement, wasn't it? And then one of the things I'm actually finding just now is this is amongst one of the most challenging things I think I've had to do. Because I'm trying to be careful in what I say so that, you know, you think, gosh, I don't want to offend anyone. Believe me, there's nothing to be offended about because all this was wonderful. But, you know, if I was to say 
um, well done for some wonderful playing. Some uh, it puts an element of doubt in there. Some people will be saying, well, well, was mine not good enough? And it all was. But it just shows you the problems of recording, doesn't it? When bad enough recording and audio recording where every single thing is under the microscope, but when you can be seen as well, it makes it all the more difficult. And it makes it all the more impressive that you all did as well as you did there. So what can we do when we're actually filming ourselves and having to record to make things easier? Now you folks are getting to the stage where perhaps you will have to record things from time to time and as we go further through school you know, might have to record performances or work with other musicians where we have to film things. So how do we make it work? How do we get used to it? What are the problems? Well the first one is that one of tension isn't it? Very easy to get tense like that. You all know that feeling I'm sure as indeed I do just now. But when we get tense and we start to kind of get a bit panicky is when we actually you know, we're, we lose the flexibility that we need, physical flexibility to be able to move. You know, we need to have nice loose arms as well, nice loose hands. We need to be able to rotate our wrists. We need to be able to, you know, not have a neck that feels like it's kind of strapped up in order to be able to move round well at the piano and um, to perform well, to be in control. So... One of the best ways, funny enough, to get good at doing this thing is to do it often, to practice doing it. The first few times you record, it can be painful. In fact, it can at any kind of point, but you get to the point where you can handle how it feels. You, that kind of weird feeling that you have, the same with performing as well. Like that. But that's fine, you get used to it and you're able to operate within that, you're able to relax within that. So I would encourage you to Film yourselves while you're playing regularly. Record yourselves regularly. Don't be intimidated um, by cameras. In actual fact, it can be a really good thing as well because it can actually give you an insight into what you're doing. You can see things maybe that you don't realise you're doing when you're playing. Perhaps it's something your teacher's saying, now be careful, what's that? Thing? And then when it's there on film, you go, ah, right, I see what they're meaning. But you know what? You did very, very well. Wonderful playing, musically convincing as well. And what I would call secure performances, things that were convincing. You understood what the music was about, what the composer's intentions were. When I was speaking to class one, two, three in the other video that I made, um, we were talking about some of the elements, you know, things like articulation and dynamics and, you know, things like that. And that's all really, really evident um, in your performing. And pr practicing is really, really important, isn't it? Very often I would be speaking about practicing if I was with you live and be asking you what you do, how often you practice. Well, I can tell that people have been practicing. I think sometimes when you have to record and film things, it makes you practice. Even when you're practicing recording, you go, oh gosh, that's not good, I'll do it again. Try things, you know, we're listening, we're watching, we're listening. Listening is key to everything we do. One of the problems with the piano is it's like a giant typewriter in many ways, isn't it? It's got notes that basically play sounds if you hit them. And it doesn't matter, anyone could kind of hit the right notes in the right order. But to turn that into music requires someone that's listening. And you folks were doing that and all you're playing there. So well done and thank you for that. I think what you've done represents a fantastic achievement. I said this to the class earlier as well. Please keep on playing. Please, please keep on bringing an enormous joy to people through your playing. Keep on growing as musicians. Some of the playing there, there I go, I'm saying that, some, all of the playing there was just absolutely fantastic. It was a real treat. Um, one of the things as well that I just want to kind of think about for a second are instruments themselves. And this is something that impresses me. A wide variety of instruments you're having to play and when we're in the townhouse or we're in another venue you know it's fine we're all playing the same piano and um, in this room here where I'm sat just now this is my studio I've got um, a few pianos I've got more than a few pianos in my life I'm afraid but they all play differently they all respond differently and you will find that every instrument has its own character they are different some have got a heavy touch some have got a light touch some of you are playing keyboards and I know that's a necessity and they're difficult. Gosh, you folks that were playing keyboards were playing keyboards better than I could ever do them. I find them very difficult to play because I find the keys just run away from me. I'm so used to working with a, you know, a firm piano action. 
But, um, you know, being able to use a piano action or something that's touch sensitive, something that is weighted, ultimately will really, really bring your playing on. It will give you much more control and it will take you on further to um, the different technical challenges that will be in the music that you will be moving on to. So well done. Keep on working. Practice. Listen to what your teachers are saying. Thank you, parents, for um, supporting and um, for making this music that we've listened to just so enjoyable. Thank you. Hello, my name is Liz Woodsend and I'm pleased to introduce you to Class 6 of the Piano Festival today. Class 6 includes pieces which are Grade 5 or Grade 6 standard. I'd just like to say a big congratulations to everybody who's entered um, a piece today. Um, certainly, I can assure you that recording a piece at home is not an easy thing to do and you, you feel that you end up doing it lots and lots of times to try and get a really good version. So well done and thank you. Um, without further ado, I will pass you over to Charlotte Hawthorne Buchanan, who will be playing Fantasia. Thank you and enjoy. Hi, my name is Charlotte Hawthorne Buchanan. I'm from Dunbar Grammar School and today I'm going to play Fantasia.
Well, Class 6, thank you for such wonderful musical performing. And I've got to say that um, there's been such convincing performing, such convincing musically performing from the get-go with this festival. And to be fair, that's always the case. But there's something extra special here. I wonder what it is. Now, I know that when we're in the townhouse in Haddington, or you get the chance to play any fine concert instrument like that, it's a real thrill, it's a highlight. But we don't get much of an opportunity to sit down and practice them. I know that um, before last year's festival, and they were getting all organised in the background, people were having a little shock. They were sitting down and they were nervously playing the piano because they just weren't used to how it played. Whereas the instruments that we're hearing you play on today are the ones that you're used to playing with, ones that you live with every single day. And there's something enormously comforting about that, isn't there? Whether it's a keyboard, a digital piano, or an acoustic piano, it's what you're used to. Now, imagine the scenario, I'm going to be very careful what I'm saying here, if, um, you know, other instrumentalists have to contend with what pianists have to, we very often have to contend with whatever is sitting in the room for us. And it could be a good piano, it could be a spectacular piano, or it could be something that's pretty duff and doesn't really work very well, quite badly out of tune. Um, imagine that, you know, if the string players had to go and just choose a violin off the wall or trumpet player pick something off the floor, you know, or something like that, that just was all bashed up, wasn't playing very well. And there are these wonderful, marvellous accounts of pianists of bygone eras who used to take their instruments with them. Vladimir Horowitz, for example, great Russian pianist, lived in New York for many, many years. He used to have his piano taken all around the world with him. And he called it his beauty, and it would be hoisted out of his townhouse window on a crane. Oh, that'd be a bit nerve-wracking. Imagine if they damaged it. But anyway, he had great security because he knew how it played. His tuner would go with him. He concert tuner Franz Moore would go with him and would get that piano just playing exactly how he wanted it. The idiosyncratic performer, um, Canadian pianist Glenn Gould, who was amazing, okay, um, had his pianos adjusted so that they played quite like his childhood piano which was kind of all over the place, to be honest. Some notes were stiff, some were light, but he was used to it. There's some security in that. And there's people that have suffered from tremendous anxiety with playing different pianos. A composer called Michelangelo, sometimes he'd be playing right up until the audience were allowed into the hall. And he'd just say, no, I don't feel like it today. No, concert cancelled. And people would be sent home. So it just shows you, it's a tricky, tricky business, even for people that have been doing it for a long, long time. So thank you for that glimpse into your sound world. It was simply mesmerising listening to you. And obviously they, they, we've spoken a little bit today so far about the tr trickiness, or rather or the challenges of actually filming yourself. How many people managed it in a single take? Maybe some of you did. Several takes. It takes me several takes to do stuff like this. Um, although hopefully it sounds quite natural and spontaneous. It's very easy to get stuck in a... Oh, oh, uh, um, uh, oh, type thing. And it's like that when we're playing sometimes. If you've memorised something and you get going and then something puts you off your guard, it could be, oh, 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 oh what goes next? What happens? But wonderful evidence of a very, very good practice in here, folks. And the reason I know that is because the intention, the musical intentions here are being displayed. You know, there's 
wonderful um, attention to detail. And that's key in really, really good performing. Practicing with attention to detail, phrasing, articulation, dynamics, pedaling. Thinking of the mood and the character. You know, we're thinking about actually not just getting the notes right here, but actually how we bring it alive. And that really is coming across um, in all of your playing here. And despite the limitations of the recording that we're using, the sound quality and the warmth of tone that um, you're creating, um, many of you are creating, um, is coming across very, very well. And it's really, really lovely to listen to. Um, it's always such um, a highlight coming to listen to you all play. And I've got to say that um, when I was given the opportunity to do this again this year, I jumped at it because I knew it would be absolutely wonderful. I didn't actually quite get how wonderful it would be. So thank you. I think um, music at this time is incredibly powerful. I know that you've had many challenges. Obviously, it's difficult adjusting to working online with teachers doing things and to practice and you know to, to hear what one another are doing and sometimes things that take seconds to convey when you're actually working with someone in the same room take a few minutes or we've got to find different ways of explaining and doing things but it's working you're doing so so well and um, I can't wait to hear that lovely big concert grand piano playing again please stick in please keep on practicing please keep on thrilling people with your playing like you have just now. Thank you very much. Welcome to Class 7 of the East Lothian Piano Festival. Class 7 is for the most advanced students who are at the level of grades 7, 8 and beyond. For them, it's particularly sad that this year they cannot play on the lovely big grand piano in the townhouse in Haddington. Being able to play that piano is a real highlight for most young people in this class. It's a real testament too to their commitment to piano that they are still playing at such a high standard because with no exams and continual assessment for their other school subjects they are under a lot of time pressures. I know also that sending in such large video files and getting a good quality of sound on the recordings has been a big problem. All of which makes it even more amazing that we have so many piano students willing to take part and play their pieces in what will be for some their last East Lothian Piano Festival. Many of them have played every year since they started lessons. We as instructors have all really enjoyed sharing their piano journey with them over the years and while we will miss them, we wish them the very best of luck in their future. And now for our first performance.
name is Jacqueline Dixon, I'm in class 7 and I'm going to be playing Moment Musical by Rhaegar. <laughs>
this is Prelude by Hengeveld and I'm in class seven. Well, I just don't know how it's possible to actually do this playing justice by speaking now. It should be... OK, because I think you're giving such a wonderful account of yourselves. The running theme through today's festival is one of quality, which it always is, of great preparation. And, you know, to be fair, that's actually always there as well. But just really musical playing. And I wonder why that is. Is it because you've had to record and prepare more or you've been through that process? So far in the other classes, we've been speaking about the challenges of recording. You know, for example, in my customary style, if I was asking you how many people, hands up, um, managed to get the recording done in a single take, would you have your hand up? How many people took several takes to get the recording done? You'll notice I've got my hand up as well. Um... <laughs> because it is actually a really tricky business, but there is actually a good side to it as well. For those of us when we're actually listening and watching what we're doing, and we, we've got the old quality control on the go, it gives us the opportunity to improve what we're doing, to try and better what we're doing. That could be a real challenge to do. It can be very frustrating, can't it? Because you can make some good things and then mess something up, and you know, it can go on for quite a while. But that's true of any kind of recording project. And if you ever 
um, endeavour to find out about, say, classical recording or any kind of recording for that matter, you'll find that recordings are the result of several takes very often. If it's a, a, a piece of music that's been performed by a soloist, they'll very often record it through a few times in its entirety and then different sections that they can use for editing and patching things up. In severe cases, we're told that some classical recordings are merely nothing more than a patchwork quilt. Edit, 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 you know, every few notes or something like that. Is that a proper performance? Or has that been created? You know what? Your performances are great because you weren't able to edit them like that. And there was something really brilliant about the musicianship in these performances. And that's something I think as we get on further up our, our stages in school and, and we become more experienced musicians and performers, um, we really start to convey the musical content that bit better. At the same time as actually negotiating all the technical challenges of the music, which you do really, really well. And some of the things that really, really impressed me in the playing here, I'm very careful, I was laughing about using that word some in the last class, which implies that some people weren't, and that's not true. It's just one of these things, you know how some people go, um, ah, uh, ooh, uh, you know, I seem to use the word some, when I actually should say, well, all of you did this really, really well. So my apologies. The, um, actually, being able to balance things up between the hands is really, really good. Um, melodies, as you know, can appear anywhere in piano music. They can appear in the bass, they can appear in the treble, that's usually where they are. They can appear in the middle. And getting the balance between parts is actually quite tricky. Sometimes there'll be a musical dialogue that goes on. The great thing about the piano, obviously, is we can have multiple parts on the go at the same time. You can have more than one part going on in each hand. One on the bottom of your hand, one on the top. One at either side, you know, bottom of your left hand, top of your right hand, and then something going on in the middle. Um, you know, all this kind of thing, but it all has to be balanced up. There's multiple textures. There's been the understanding of the music, which is evident in what you're doing there. Um, there are times where we've actually got different types of touch going on at the same time as one another. Lightly detached notes while something else is smooth and legato, or something that is singing out against something that's a much more spiky and much more, um, not disjointed, but, you know, a, a much lighter kind of accompaniment. And there's great evidence of that going on in here as well. Peddling as well. Peddling's a difficult thing, isn't it? Um, and it's a very subjective thing as well. You know, people have got different ideas about peddling. People have got different ideas about conveying musical ideas. And, but, you know, your performing is convincing. And, and even through the limitations of recording and videoing, um, the, the warmth of tone and character of the music is coming across in your playing there. These are things always to consider. You know, being able to record film and listen to ourselves is a great quality control thing to do. And I would urge you to do that. In the last class, um, I said, well, do it often. Get used to doing it. Get used to the feeling of it. Get used to watching yourselves. It can be completely and utterly cringeworthy, as no doubt I'm about to find when I watch myself on these. But it can be really revealing. It can be really helpful to us as musicians to help us grow and to, you know, some of the things we do in performances seem fine when we're sitting at the piano. But then when you're further back in a room, they don't come across quite as well. As I said to the last class, sometimes the teacher will say, well, you know, now be careful with that type of thing. You, you know, you can only see it yourself when you watch yourself back. So, so try it out. Please keep on practicing. Please keep on playing. You've brought an enormous amount of joy to people today in all your performances. I thoroughly enjoyed every single thing that I've listened to. And I find it completely and utterly moving, to be um, honest with you. Um, it's great that we can share music, even through this medium, and to a whole range of people um, at this time. And I think you represent a group of youngsters down here in East Lothian that are completely and utterly talented. And it's a real pleasure to see this and to hear it too. Thank you.